Today's video is sponsored by Ritual's Essential Multivitamin for Women. I'll share more on them coming up. For today's What I Eat in a Day video, I'm just gonna share with you guys all of the wholesome and real food things that I like to eat as a certified holistic nutritionist and as a mom of four. Every day, especially after those sleep deprived nights with my two year old, I definitely have to have my morning cup of coffee. And I'll usually have either a double espresso or I'll make it in my French press. And I like to add a little bit of organic grass fed whole milk and a dash of maple syrup. And then I'll usually sip on that while I'm making breakfast for the family. So we have a family of six and we love to eat breakfast together. That's just a great way to start the day. And I'll usually make a couple of different things. So I'll make eggs or I'll make some toast or I'll make pancakes and I'll make something on the side just so there's a few different options. Today I'm going to be making some avocado toast on some of my homemade sourdough and I'm going to top it with a little bit of bacon. So first I just put the bacon in the oven to cook and while that's going I'm going to go ahead and saute some mushrooms that I'm going to top some omelets with. So I love to put extra veggies on my omelets but I'll just go ahead and make cheese omelets for the kids because they like that best and then I can top it with whatever veggies and usually my older daughter she'll add veggies to hers and my boys are a little pickier so they'll just kind of use whatever they want to use to top their omelet with. But I go ahead and I grab some eggs and then I like to put some nice grass fed butter on my griddle here and I'll just cook that. This is my favorite way to make an omelet. I love these cast iron griddles. They're really nice, nothing ever sticks to it. And then I just like to put a little bit of sharp white cheddar inside and fold it over and that's the omelet. I'll usually cut it up so we can share it and then I'll top mine with mushrooms or whatever veggies I've sauteed that day. I take some of my rustic kind of crusty sourdough bread that I make and then I top it with some avocado after I toast it. And then a great addition to kind of make this a heartier breakfast is just putting that bacon on top. There's so much flavor in there. And then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of chives over just for that really nice onion flavor and some brightness. Okay, so before I sit down to eat this delicious breakfast, I wanna tell you guys about today's video sponsor, Ritual. This year, this is kind of a new habit that I'm trying to stick with, is adding in a really good quality multivitamin, which is why I'm so excited to share Ritual with you guys. So I'm taking the women's 18 plus essential multivitamin, and I know there's so many supplements out there that sometimes it's really hard to figure out which one you should be taking or which brands you can trust and which ones have good quality products. There's so many different factors, which is why I've chosen Ritual. So some of the things I love about this brand is that they're made traceable so there's no sketchy ingredients in it so you know exactly where the ingredients are coming from and why they're there and I also love that they're third-party tested that's kind of a necessity when you're taking a supplement ritual even goes above the industry standard and they test every batch for things like heavy metals and microbes and even allergens so you can really trust that it's a pure product and it's also non GMO verified and is backed by a university led clinical study so there's plenty of testing done on this you know exactly what you're getting another thing that I think is really cool about these is they have a delayed release capsule design that's designed to dissolve later in your small intestine, which is like the ideal place to dissolve. You're not just getting good quality ingredients, but you're making sure that your body can actually absorb them. It's also completely gentle on your stomach, so you can take it with or without food. I know before I've taken certain multivitamins and they've made me so sick that I can't even take them with food. So I really appreciate that they have a gentle formula that's not gonna upset my gut. So this new year, let's commit to our daily habits with science-backed results. Ritual is offering you guys 40% off your first month. So you can either scan the QR code here on screen or you can go to ritual.com forward slash healthy Elizabeth 40 and that will get you 40% off your first purchase on your first month. Go check that out. Tell me what you think about this product and thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. So usually when I eat hearty breakfast like this, I don't need tons of snacks throughout the day, but this morning I was wanting a little bit of something extra. And so I had a grass-fed beef stick. I love these, these are really great. They have no sugar and they're grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And then I just had that with a little bit of hot tea. And that was great to hold me over to lunch. So I just got my daughter down for bedtime. So now is a good time for me to make lunch. Usually if I have lunch leftovers in the fridge, then I'll just pull that out for lunchtime and we'll kind of have like a hodgepodge lunch. 
But today I'm gonna go ahead and make something because we don't have enough leftovers in the fridge. I just have my big kids outside playing on their scooters so I can quickly do this lunch. And I have some brown rice pad thai noodles over on the stove boiling. And I love cooking those because they only take about four to five minutes. They're quick enough to cook at lunchtime. So I really like those. And if you can't find brown rice, then you could just try to find like a regular organic white rice noodle. So I just drained those noodles and now I'm just gonna rinse them with a little bit of cold water. And that just kind of helps rinse off any extra starch and keeps them from cooking and overcooking. Then at the end, I'll just put them in the curry. So curry is a great thing to make this time of year because of all the warming spices. You have turmeric and curry powder and chili powder. There's just a lot in it. And I love the turmeric because that's really going to boost my immune system. And since it's winter now, I like to fill as much of our meals with those type of spices as I can. So curry is a great way to do that because it's just loaded with spices and flavor. So I'm going to do a chickpea and cauliflower curry today. So I've got some cauliflower florets and then I've got a couple cans of chickpeas and those you could make from scratch. You can definitely buy like some dry bulk garbanzo beans or chickpeas and pressure cook them in the instant pot and drain them and rinse them. But if you're short on time like me, there is nothing wrong with not doing everything from scratch. There are lots of good ingredients out there. You have access to that aren't overly expensive that are still good quality and your body's gonna be just fine with. I'm gonna go ahead and use some canned chickpeas today, give those a quick rinse and then they'll be ready to go in the curry, which I'm gonna start in the same pot that I boiled our noodles in. So I'm using a fresh head of cauliflower, but you can use a frozen bag of cauliflower cauliflower that's gonna make it even faster you really don't even have to cook it you can cook the curry and then right at the end just throw in that bag of frozen cauliflower so if you don't have fresh on hand don't even worry about it it's gonna get you the same kind of product I just happen to have this so I'm gonna go ahead and use it before it goes bad I just like to cut it into nice florets I cut them a little bit smaller than I would if I was roasting them just because they tend to kind of melt into the soup better and are a similar size as the chickpeas and that'll also speed up the cooking time once that onion sweats down and then we can go ahead and pop this cauliflower into the skillet too and we'll let that cook for just a minute while I get the seasonings and spices ready to go. This is one of those kinds of meals that I love to just have in the fridge because it gets better and better as it sits so you can really make a big batch of it and eat it all week long so that's super convenient especially when we've got the kids and homeschool so it's just good for a stress-free lunch that's still super nourishing. In order to make this recipe really easy for you guys to follow, I have this recipe on my website and you can print that off even and then you can come back to this video and actually just cook along with me. I find that's really fun to kind of just like have the recipe and everything going and then you can play the video in the background and cook along. So after I chopped up those cauliflower florets and minced up my garlic, I went ahead and took some cans of chickpeas and I drained them and rinsed them. Then in my pot, I got a little bit of avocado oil going and I added in my onion that I chopped up along with all of our spices to really flavor this curry and make it really good for our bodies. It's such a warming dish this time of year, so I love making lots of curries in the winter. I just seasoned it up with a little salt and pepper, which actually brings out the properties in turmeric. So I always pair that with black pepper. And then I just added in a splash of veggie broth that I had in the fridge just to help make that curry powder and all the seasonings into kind of a paste. And I let that toast for just a minute and get nice and brought together just like a curry paste. Then I added in my full fat coconut milk, more broth. And then the trick to make this just outstanding is to add a little bit of coconut sugar because that helps to balance out the savoriness of of all the spices then you can go ahead and add in those cauliflower florets and then I simmer it kind of half covered over medium low heat for about 15 to 20 minutes and to give that curry that sweet and heat that I love I also add in a little bit of raisins right at the end and I let them plump up for about five minutes in the hot curry I like to go ahead and take some cilantro, chop that up, and also slice some lime wedges. Then I can start building my bowls. So first I put the brown rice pad thai noodles in the bottom, then I top that with plenty of curry, sprinkle on a little bit of cilantro, and squeeze a lime wedge in it. And this is just the perfect wintertime lunch or dinner, but it's really great any time of year, especially if you're a little under the weather.
Next, I'm just doing a little experiment today and I wanted to experiment making my own sweet chili garlic hummus. So that's one of my favorite flavors of hummus and so I wanted to try making a variation of it at home. So I started by putting in a couple garlic cloves and I minced those up first and then I added in chickpeas and tahini. I did a little bit of an organic sriracha sauce that's a little bit less spicy and also a little bit thinner than your regular sriracha. And then I added in a little maple syrup, some salt and some roasted red peppers. And I blended that all together and it made this delicious, creamy, roasted red pepper hummus. So I'm gonna have this today as a little snack. And I also made enough so I can make a jar full of it and put it in the fridge to eat for the rest of the week. Okay, so right now I'm just about to make a little snack. It's not time for dinner yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a little snack plate with the hummus that I showed you, which is like a sweet chili garlic hummus. If you've ever had the boar's head one, that is my favorite hummus, but it's not organic and it has a few ingredients that are not good in there, so I'm trying to make my own homemade version of it but I have not perfected it yet. That's pretty good. It's like a roasted red pepper hummus, but it doesn't quite have the exact same flavor. So I'm still working on developing that recipe, but I'm gonna go ahead and eat it because it's still delicious. So I'm gonna have a little bit of cucumber and peppers, hummus. I love just like a little snack plate in the afternoon and my kids love that kind of thing too. And I think because it's like a board and they have a dip to dip in, they think it's really fun. And so it really helps us eat healthier things like cucumber and seed crackers and veggies and all that kind of stuff. So they really enjoy that. And then I'm also gonna drink a little bit of yerba mate. So this is an unsweetened tea. It's similar to a green tea or a matcha, but it has a little bit different antioxidants and a good amount of caffeine, so it gives me a nice boost in the afternoon, but it's super clean. It's just filtered water, organic yerba mate, which is just a loose leaf tea, and then a little bit of caffeine in there from it, and I'll drink probably about half of this. I won't drink the whole bottle because I don't need that much caffeine. If you like the taste of a lightly sweetened green tea, that's actually what this reminds me of. It almost has like a little bit of a limey flavor to me. I don't know if that's right, but that's kind of what I taste, just a little bit of like a sweet lime flavor. So this is really fun to drink. It gives me a nice energy boost, super hydrating. And so let's go ahead and make the snack board. So this snack board is just for me right now. My kids have already had snacks today. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these little mini peppers. These are my favorite. They're so sweet and just really fun to eat in the afternoon. They're nice and crunchy and juicy. And then I have mini cucumbers. These are also one of my favorite things to snack on. I feel like their flavor is so much better. And then I have a little bit of an organic cheese that's local to me. And then I love these kinds of crackers. These are the Mary's Gone Crackers. This is the herb one. They're gluten-free. And they also have really clean ingredients for the most part. So brown rice, quinoa, flax seeds, sesame, spices, garlic, rosemary, sea salt, soybeans with a little bit of vinegar and salt. I'm also gonna do a little bit of these stuffed green olives. They have smoked garlic in them. And I love putting olives on some of my snack boards because olives are actually fermented. So you're getting a little bit of the gut benefits of that. Whenever I'm making little snack plates like that for me or the kids, I always make sure to have different textures and flavors and colors. And to make the vegetables taste even better, I love to sprinkle some salt and pepper and do a drizzle of olive oil and it just makes everything taste good and flavorful. So dinner tonight is really going to be a meal that I love. These are not very crazy groundbreaking recipes, but I love it because you can make it and I love to make the brown rice that goes with it the night before. So I already have that brown rice made and in the fridge and I cooked it with a little bit of broth. So I used some veggie broth and I also used, what was it? Oh, a dash of bone broth to give it that like chickeny flavor too. So it's like a really good just staple side of rice. And then I'm also going to do my cabbage slaw or my cabbage 
cabbage salad. It's really simple, but it's one of those things I wanna eat pretty much every night and my kids do too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a full head of cabbage and we're gonna kind of marinate that in some raw apple cider vinegar and some spices and onion. And it just makes the most flavorful salad that you can use as a side dish to any meal. It just goes great with everything. It's great on its own. My kids love it so much, they'll just eat it as a full meal. We really adore it. And cabbage is so inexpensive. You can get them fresh all year long and it's just an amazing thing for your body too because cabbage is cruciferous and we have the probiotics from the apple cider vinegar. So this is something that you can fill, you know, a good portion, at least half your plate with this cabbage slaw and you're getting tons of prebiotics, tons of probiotics from the raw apple cider vinegar. You're getting spices, you're getting all the benefits of the onion. There's just so many things going on. So I love it. It's super affordable. I can keep it in the fridge and now I'm going to pair it with the brown rice that I already have cooked. So this is going to be a really easy dinner. So what I'm making is I have my brown rice. I'm going to make my cabbage slaw and then I'm going to make some little roasted meatballs. These are going to be really simple meatballs, but they're made with a little bit of Pecorino Romano, which is that sheep's milk cheese that I love to use, but you could swap it out for just regular good old Parmesan. That's the same sort of thing, but I do prefer the sheep's milk. It's a little bit tangier and then the sheep's milk is easier on your digestive system. It's kind of like goat's milk. Our bodies usually tolerate the sheep's milk and the goat's milk a little bit better than cow's milk but whatever kind of quality cheese you can get your hand on will completely work here you just want to finely grate it like a powdery one that you would get in the green can at the grocery store so try to get one that's a little more quality we want to use something that has good flavor we just need a little bit of it and it's gonna make these meatballs just outstanding it's so good to have just like a nice meat dinner and pair it with some coleslaw it's delicious and I love to use a nice regenerative grass-fed ground beef. I don't do super lean ground beef. A lot of the fat will cook out of them, but then usually once they're on this baking sheet, because I make them in my oven, I'll drizzle a little bit more of those drippings on top of the meatballs or on top of the rice, and oh, those good fats in that beef, you cannot go wrong, it's delicious. Okay, so I've got my big dish of rice that's been in the fridge, so now that's ready to go. And then I've got my cabbage here that we're gonna use for the slaw, so we're just gonna need some onions. I'm gonna go grab those and my apple cider vinegar. This is the apple cider vinegar brand that I like to use. I stopped buying the Bragg's apple cider vinegar because they actually dilute that with water so it's not as good of a value but if you get this Fairchild's one I actually order a, I think it's a three pack of these huge 32 ounce ones. Um, they come together on Amazon is actually the only place I can find this brand, but it's great. It's undiluted and it's made in the USA and fully organic, raw with the mother, unfiltered, unpasteurized. This is what you want. It's super high quality. I can link it for you guys if you want to check it out for yourself. And what I'll actually do is a lot of mornings I will start my day with filtered water with a squeeze of lemon and a tablespoon of this apple cider vinegar. And it's great for balancing out your blood sugar and it's also great for your digestion and getting that going for the day and just really getting your body in a good place. So I'll leave that link down below. It's a fantastic product, I love it. And I'm gonna use some 85% lean, grass-fed, organic ground beef. So don't be scared off by ground beef. I know a lot of people think that it's not healthy, but there is tons of research in functional medicine and functional food that it is one of the best things for your body. There's so many amino acids in it. It's great for your brain. So I'm gonna use a couple pounds of that beef and let me go ahead and show you how easy it is to put this together. All we're gonna do is get our oven preheated. I like to do between 400 and 425 and I'll get these meatballs all made in a bowl. You could also use a food processor if you have a big enough one. I haven't bought a big enough one yet. I'm looking at one now and I'm trying to decide, but I'm definitely gonna get one soon. So you could make these really quickly, pop all the ingredients in the food processor, and then just whirl it up and your meatballs are done. Scoop them out and pop them on the baking sheet. Of course, I'm using my unbleached parchment paper. I use this for everything. Let me show you. If you're new to my channel, you'll see me use these a lot. I buy them in bulk off Amazon. You can get about 200 of them and they're just unbleached all natural parchment paper sheets. And it also makes cleanup a breeze. So one of my favorite kitchen things, that's for sure. You could even do air fryer. If you wanna make this super quick, pop them in the air fryer, pop them in your oven, whatever works for you, I promise they're gonna turn out well. You guys might hear the kids in the background because they're inside from playing and they're ready to eat dinner, so I gotta get going. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a couple eggs to this ground beef here and you wanna use good quality pasture raised eggs. These are actually from my mom. She has backyard chickens too. I have some too, but they're not laying yet. They're supposed to start laying any day, so I'm kind of waiting for that. But her Easter eggers just started laying and I love these olive green eggs. These are so gorgeous. Can you see that? Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these precious eggs in our ground beef mixture. Mm -hmm. 
So in my bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and put in two pounds of ground beef and two eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna start by flavoring these up and then we're gonna grate in a little bit of onion to put in here too. But this is the brand of Pecorino Romano that I'm gonna be using and it's not certified organic and all that, but it's imported from Italy and they have different standards for their food over there, so I'm okay with it. But if you can find an organic, a grass-fed, pasture-raised type of Pecorino or Parmesan, then go ahead and use that but you can see how finely powdered this is. This is a very like finely grated cheese, so this is perfect for using in meatballs. So I'm gonna add in about half a cup of that into our mixture. <laughs> and this is really where our flavor is gonna come from, is that sharpness of the cheese. It's gonna really make those meatballs pop. It's kind of gonna be almost like a Greek meatball. It has similar flavors. I'm gonna add in a little bit of dried oregano here, probably about one teaspoon, and that's for two pounds of beef. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in about three tablespoons here of my whole milk. And this is just to help keep our meatballs nice and moist. Because even when you're using a higher fat ground beef, it can still dry out in the oven and we wanna make sure that that stays nice and wet. So the grated pecorino that I added in here will kind of help absorb that milk and almost turn it into a breadcrumb. So these meatballs are gonna be gluten-free and that's kind of how I like to replace the typical like breadcrumb or you know, soft pieces of bread that you would put in like meatloaf, something like that, is you can take this powdery cheese and then add in milk and it kind of fluffs it up almost like a breadcrumb. Okay, I'm gonna add in a little bit of Worcestershire. I can't remember if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm saying it today. I'm gonna add in a little bit of that and that's gonna help build that beefy flavor. I'm gonna do about two teaspoons of my good Italian salt. This is a Sicily salt, so it's nice, good sea salt. I'm gonna add about one teaspoon per pound of ground beef. And this is definitely one of those recipes that you're gonna want to make plenty of. So I like to make a big batch of these. Sometimes I'll make like even three pounds of ground beef. You really don't even have to meal prep. You just kind of cook just a little bit more and make things that are really delicious to keep in the fridge, like brown rice and salads and meatballs. There's so many different things that keep so well. So I just like to make a little bit extra. And then I'm also gonna do my pepper. I gotta do pepper before I forget. Just a little bit so that it's nicely seasoned. And I'm also gonna grate in one sweet onion, which I need to go grab. And actually I grabbed two, cause we're gonna use one in these meatballs or at least half of one in the meatballs. And then we're also gonna slice one up for our cabbage slaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and have two of these out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grate up this onion. That way it melts really nicely into our meatball mixture. Next, I'm going to microplane in one garlic clove, and this just gives the meatballs a really nice flavor without using garlic powder. I love just having fresh garlic as much as I can, so I'm gonna go ahead and grate that in, and then go ahead and mix these meatballs together. And I like to bake them on parchment paper that's been sprayed with a little bit of avocado oil. I find that this helps them brown the best, and so then I'll spray the tops with the avocado oil too and get those in the oven to bake. I like to bake them at about 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. For this leftover brown rice, all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of veggie broth and I'm gonna add a splash in here. I'm just gonna break it up and kind of fluff it for a second and then just go ahead and put my lid back on and we're gonna let this heat up on the stove and it'll start to steam up and then everything will be warmed and ready to go for dinner. So while the meatballs are in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my cabbage salad. So I went ahead and I grated all of that cabbage and then I thinly sliced a sweet onion. Next, I just sprinkled in some oregano, some salt and pepper, and then I drizzle it with a little drizzle of raw honey, along with about a quarter cup of olive oil and around a third of a cup of that raw apple cider vinegar. And I like to toss it all together or sometimes I'll just get in there with my hands and make sure it's really nicely massaged down so that it's ready to eat and nice and soft. For 
dinner tonight is done. We've got our plate half full with the cabbage salad. And I have a little bit of brown rice over here that's nice and steamed. And then a couple of our meatballs. And occasionally the kids will want some sauce to dip it in. So I like to give them a healthier sauce. And I love this one too. Their no soy teriyaki or mango jalapeno is a really good barbecue sauce they make. It has really simple ingredients and they're all organic. It's just like water, coconut aminos, coconut syrup, orange juice, sesame seeds, balsamic vinegar. It just has real ingredients. So I love to keep a variety of these kind of sauces in my house and we can just drizzle a little bit on the meatballs if we want that. But I love dinners like this. You have your protein and your fat, you have your carbs and you have tons of fiber and pre and probiotics. And this is gonna keep us full and satisfied and I could eat this every night of the week. Hmm, it is so good. So at night, I usually wanna reach for a little piece of dark chocolate or some Greek yogurt. Sometimes I'll even do a little bit of cottage cheese with blackberries, but I love to have a little bit of something at night. So tonight I'm gonna to have a few of these little coconut date rolls. They're basically just dates. You could make these yourself. They're dates and then they roll them in desiccated coconut. So I'm gonna have a few of these tonight. along with a little bit of my hot tea. And I kind of like to make a bedtime tea. So what I'll do is I'll take some of my homemade elderberry syrup and I will put a little bit of this in some decaf tea. So right now I'm brewing an organic Earl Grey tea and this is decaffeinated. So I like to drink this one at night because I don't want any more caffeine to make sure that I'm getting good sleep. So what I'll do is I'll make my tea with hot water and I'll let that steep until it's nice and strong. I like a pretty strong tea and you can do loose leaf too. I actually have some loose leaf teas, but I need a better tea bowl because every time I make it now, it is leaking the little loose leaves into my tea. So if you have any recommendations for how you make your loose leaf tea, let me know in the comments because I would love to buy one of those little round balls or something like that so that I can brew my loose leaf. But for now, I'm just using this. At least it's organic, but I'd rather not use the little plastic packet that they come in. So I'm just gonna let this steep for a few minutes and then I will show you how I put it together. Okay, so now that that's steep, I'm gonna add in my elderberry syrup. I made it using a mixture of spices and local raw honey, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a splash of this into my hot tea, and this works to kind of sweeten it too. And I love elderberry, especially during the winter because it really works to help build your immune system and keep you from getting sick. Or if sometimes I feel like I'm getting sick, I'm getting a cold, I'll go ahead and add some of my elderberry syrup into my tea and then it helps me beat my sickness. Or at least it'll shorten the length of my cold. So sometimes if I have a cold, it'll last up to seven days. But when I take elderberry and really use these medicinal remedies, I find my colds only last for two to three days and they're much less severe. So I highly recommend that. And then sometimes I'll either use my grass-fed milk or I will use my organic low temp pasteurized grass-fed heavy cream. And I like this one at night, especially just because it's really filling and satisfying and it's not gonna raise your blood sugar as much as whole milk will. So I'm gonna put in a little dash of this and this one is non-homogenized, so you do have to shake it up. You might see little chunks in it, but don't worry, that's just cream, it's not old. I love to just do this and then I'll take it upstairs with me and I can have it on my bedside table while I'm reading a book. And it's just nice and convenient and a great little end to the day. Thank you to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to take advantage of this limited time sale and use my code linked below for 40% off your first month.